In this video, we're going to go over how you can get access to the Google Imogen 4 model, which is a very impressive image generator for free. And we'll go through how to actually use the access points we have for Google Imogen 4. I'll also briefly show you a comparison between the ChatGPT 4.0 image generation model and Google Imogen 4 using the same set of prompts. But you might be thinking, well, Andre, how do I know for sure that we have the commercial rights? And we're going to get into that right now. Okay, so here we are. I've used Cloud Opus 4, which is a part of the Anthropic AI ecosystem, and it has the best deep research tool. And I wanted to get a clear answer on whether or not we have commercial rights. And if you look at the report, it cited 252 sources. There are tons of sources. Most of them are from Google, right? So let's go into the report, and it says Google Whisk AI and Google Vertex API explicitly allow commercial use. So I feel pretty confident saying that we can use Google Whisk AI, we could use Google's image generation ecosystem, and we don't have to worry about commercial rights. And I believe that the free version of ChatGPT is the same, but there's more rate limiting. So we need to think outside of ChatGPT if we want to get anything done in a reasonable amount of time. So let's slide on over to Google Whisk. Okay, so here we are in Google Whisk. This is the easiest way by far to get access to Imogen 4 for free. And it's pretty easy to create an account. All you need to do is have a Gmail account and you can sign in through there. So let's click enter tool and we are faced with this interface. And the way that we can get the most out of this is by clicking this thing down here, choosing square because that is the best way to get images here. And then we change this to best quality if it isn't already there. So let's go ahead and take a pre-prepared prompt here. So I dropped a large pre-prepared prompt. It's very instructive. And Imogen 4 does a great job not getting overwhelmed and hitting most of the things that are available to it as far as instructions. So we're, we have this set at square. We have this set at best quality and we press go. And after just five or six seconds, we've got these pretty solid outputs here. And we could favorite it, but it doesn't currently do anything. We could download it. We can right click, copy image, bring it over into vectorizer or whatever we want to do. It's a very solid basic interface here. And the other thing that you could do is you can go to my library and you can go to projects if you're looking at different chats or what I typically do is I just go to images. And then we have access to all of the images that we've recently generated. And the other way that we could get free access is going to Google AI Studio. And then we go over here to the left and it says generate media. You click generate media. We go to Imogen and it's the same kind of thing as Google Whisk. All we need to do is have a Google account and sign in using the Google account. And there are definitely rate limits within this interface, but again, it's free and it's free to use commercially. So let's take this and we're going to drop another pre-prepared prompt here. And I actually like using this 3-4 ratio. It gives me the best results. So we've already clicked Generate Media. We've pasted our pre-prepared prompt. And we're going to select Imogen 4 Ultra. And Imogen 4 Ultra just uses more token compute. So it does a better job of following instructions. And it does a better job of making sure that the image is as high quality as possible. So let's go ahead and hit Run. And here we are. That's a pretty solid result. Totally happy with that. Definitely something that could work on a t-shirt. And again, you can go through and you can copy it or you could download it and process it however you want to. So I wanted to do a bit of a comparison of what ChatGPT does versus Imogen 4 Ultra. And I use the same exact prompt in both image generators. So this is using the 3-4 aspect ratio. In this case, ChatGPT 4.0 did a better job for something that would turn out looking good on apparel. However, there is nothing wrong with this image, and I do believe that this would also be something that could sell. And if you look, we've got accurate text, a good composition, and I don't really have too many complaints about it. Now, here's another 
prompt, exact same prompt, and we've got these two different designs. They both look good in different ways. Uh, ChatGPT 4.0 actually got the prompt wrong in terms of how it showed up in the image generation. It was supposed to be two lines and it ended up doing three lines. Okay, now here we have a more wild design. And again, same exact prompt. And we have two very solid outputs from each of the image generators. Now, this design is a little bit more wild. It's got a lot more color. And it feels like that Imogen does a better job when it comes to getting very vibrant colors. ChatGPT mutes things, and that's fine in many cases. But in this case, we want to have things look bright and bold. And I think that Imogen 4 does a better job of that in this instance. And here we have the classic, just a dad who always came back with the milk. We've got ChatGPT over here, and we've got Imogen 4 Ultra over here. Both very solid options. And then one more over here, since Halloween is coming up soon, and we've got ChatGPT 4.0 and Imogen 4, both with very solid outputs. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, Google Whisk and Google AI Studio are both very useful tools that they make available to you for free. There are rate limits, but free plans always have rate limits, and you do get free commercial rights access to the images that you generate through these tools. So if you haven't checked them out, check them out. It's free after all. And Google AI Studio is also useful for using its Gemini 2.5 Pro model for a lot of the same things that you would use ChatGPT for if you're conversing with ChatGPT. So if you have budgetary concerns, then I would be bouncing between ChatGPT and Google AI Studio and using Google Whisk in order to get things launched in my print-on-demand business. Now, I'm sure you noticed when I did the small demonstrations that I use very long descriptive prompts. If you want to learn why or how to do that type of prompting, then I would check out this video over here. It's super compatible with Imogen 4, and it's the best way that I've found to interact with ChatGPT 4.0's image generator. So if you want to learn that stuff, check it out over here, and I will see you in that video.